Hey friends, what's up? Ash here. Welcome back to Extra Gent Sense. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Time for a quick little review. Just want to talk about a fragrance that I got in a little while back. Bought it from FragranceNet as part of a big haul. It's the Merchant of Venice Blue Tea. So the reason I was drawn to this is first off, the presentation is awesome. Just love this bottle. I think it looks great. Box is actually really nice too. I'll show you that in a sec. And I've also always been interested in the Merchant of Venice for some reason. There was a while that you couldn't find these in the US really at all, whether we're talking discounters or retailers or distributors or whatever. The Merchant of Venice was really hard to find in the US. So I ordered a couple bottles, this was years ago, from Europe. Used to be you could order niche fragrances from Europe and save a lot of money because you didn't have to pay that and the shipping wasn't that much to the US. So you could pick up fragrance bottles over there for like half what they would cost in the US. Now it's not really as good as it used to be because a lot more brands are carried in the US now than were carried uh, previously and shipping costs are crazy high nowadays for the most part. So yeah, all that out of the way, I just have always kind of dug the Merchant of Venice. I try to pick them up when I can, when I find them for a good price. I found this for a good price picked it up. So in today's video, you know what we're going to do. I'll show you the presentation up close, up close and personal, break the fragrance down a little bit for you, let you know how it smells and uh, tell you whether or not I think you should check it out. So let's jump into it. All right, first off the presentation. So here is the box, but first up, we'll take a look at the little slip of paper that goes over the box has the name of the fragrance, name of the house, size and concentration on the front. On the sides, it has the name of the fragrance and the note breakdown. And then on the back, it has your ingredients and your badge code. Mine is 21041528A. Box looks really nice, has this pretty design that goes all the way around it. And it's very cool because it opens up and then almost showcases the bottle right there in the front. I really, really like that, it looks cool and it has kind of a magnetic closure as you bring it back closed. So you can see right there, keeps it all nice and tight. That's what she said. And here we got the bottle. I think it looks awesome. I love the stylistic choice here. It looks really good. You have the name of the fragrance right there on the front. You have a sticker on the bottom with your badge code. You have this little uh, red tassel there as well. And then you have the Merchant of Venice logo on top of the cap. And you know how it goes. Time to waste a couple sprays. All right, here we go. So like I said, I bought this one from Fragrance Net. I don't think it's in stock there anymore. It sold out. They probably didn't have many to begin with. I'll try to link in the description below where you can pick this up and also where you can find some other Merchant of Venice fragrances at discounters. As of this video, Joma Shop does have it for I think right at 100 bucks. If you shop there, use the code GENTS8. It'll get you $8 off any order over 110. If you shop at twistedlily.com or luckyscent.com, use the code GENTS10. It'll save you 10% off the whole website. Those are niche fragrance websites. All right, so blue tea, how does it smell? Well, <laughs> in the name, you got a pretty good hint there, blue tea. And on the side, with the note breakdown, it says blue tea leaves are in the top. And you definitely do get that tea when you first spray the fragrance on. I think it actually smells great in the opening. Definitely unisex, leaning feminine. You can tell that right away. And the tea note here is blended together with floral notes right away. At first, it's nice, pleasant, soft white florals melding together with the tea. But as the fragrance dries down, the tea steps back more and the florals kind of take the fragrance over. So it's rose, magnolia, and neroli as the floral notes in the fragrance. It's a bit powdery, and that's going to also lend itself to smelling a bit more feminine, especially as the fragrance dries down. So when you first spray it on, it's fresh, it's a little bit green, it's slightly sweet, and that melding together of the florals and the tea makes it come across a little bit more wearable for most guys. But as it dries and that tea steps back and that green edge steps back, you're left with more faint residual hints of tea and florals, especially the magnolia and the rose coming through. Neroli, you can pick up more initially, but that fades as it hits the mid. In the base, you've got vetiver, mate, and musk. You're gonna get more of that musk, just a, a faint hint of the vetiver, not too much. And frankly, once it works its way through the mid, it actually sits pretty softly 
on my skin, so it doesn't really have great performance. To be fair though, you probably wouldn't expect it to have great performance with this being the presentation and having a tea floral kind of backbone to the fragrance. It lasts a decent amount of time off my skin, but nothing crazy. You know, you're looking at probably six hours or so. I'd say average overall if I were gonna rate it on a hierarchy of weak and soft to mighty and powerful. And the projection is good initially, but like I said, once it works its way through the mid, settles down, sits closer to my skin. The quality is good above average, but not necessarily something that's insane where you smell it and you just go, oh my God, it's so lifelike. It's like I'm there, but I am there, but it feels like I'm there. And by there, I mean somewhere else, but it is good, like really nice. I, I don't have any complaints at all about how the fragrance comes across, especially not for that discounted price that I picked it up for. I mean, it's really good at that point. So interestingly enough, I actually like this more than my wife. I thought it'd be the other way around possibly. She took a look at the bottle and she said, oh my God, I love that. That is beautiful. And I sprayed it on, I smelled it and I went, oh man, that's really nice. It's got this sort of, you know, green edged sweetness, this freshness, this bit of neroli, this tea mixing together with it, a very fresh tea, not black and dark or anything like that. And I thought, man, this is great. Check this out. Had her come smell it and she went, oh no way too floral, way too powdery. To be fair, she's not a fan of florals, really. Yeah, go figure. She doesn't like florals a great amount. And this one, she just basically wrote off immediately. <laughs> it was one of those deals where it's like, you don't even get a second chance, you're done. But I actually thought it was really good. Thought it was really nice. As it dried down, like I said, got a little more feminine. And at that point, I would have thought, man, it'd be great fragrance for my wife to wear. It smell awesome on her, uh, but then she doesn't like it. So I'm kind of stuck here, you know? Got a fragrance that I think smells really good, but would smell better on her, and she doesn't want to wear it, so. In terms of seasons, absolutely more spring, summertime fragrance because it is fresh, even though it has that little bit of a powdery floral feel as it dries through the mid, it's still definitely spring, summertime fragrance. And it doesn't help that it doesn't project a ton, so even if you tried to wear it in cooler weather, it'd probably just sit right next to your skin, and it's absolutely more of a daytime fragrance than an evening fragrance, though, like I always say, if you want to wear it, go for it. If it makes you happy, wear it in the middle of winter, in the middle of the night, who cares? Overall, the fragrance is good. The quality is nice. The presentation is beautiful. Performance could be a little bit better and it leans feminine, but outside that, it's a really solid pickup. As long as you don't mind fragrances that lean a bit feminine, if you're a guy, you don't mind a floral forward fragrance with that bit of tea in the opening that slowly fades as the fragrance dries. It's a fragrance I solidly like, even if I'm maybe not completely in love with it. Now, I guess the real the real question is, uh, can I convince my wife to give it some more tries and maybe come around to liking it? So there we go, the Merchant of Venice Blue Tea. It's solid, it's not quite the tea fragrance I was hoping for. I was hoping it would have a little more tea to it, but it actually ends up being more of a floral fragrance with tea nuances instead of the other way around. If you've smelled this, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Thank you guys for hanging with me here today. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.